The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man call can these bones live and I answer O Lord God thou knowest and again he said unto me prophesy unto these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sin you upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. Amen. Glory be to the Almighty God. I'm back with you again on today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's be glad and rejoice in it. Now, I'm back with you again on today with another message. Um, I'm doing a message today on, the, um, you know, for some people that, um, Call themselves the Hebrew Israelites. Um, I think they may have misunderstood the scriptures a little bit. So this video today will hopefully that will help clear up some of that. You know what they talking about. You know out there in the streets. <clears throat> but today my message for today my title for today is uh, the Hebrew Israelites. Blinded to the word of God. And um, like we just read here in Ezekiel. The Lord say. They are in a valley of dry bones. Meaning that they what? They have not the spirit of the Lord. They know the word of God. From Old Testament. But they do not know that of the spirit. From New Testament under the new covenant that we are under now. According to. Uh, the spirit of grace and mercy. So we're going to get started today. And um, I had a, a young lady from um, up north. You know, she um, kind of been helping me out a lot with the scriptures lately. And I thank the Lord for her also as well. And um, I see where she have grew mighty in God. You know, in the word of God. And um, I believe she had knowledge of the Hebrew Israelites, but now she has come unto the knowledge of the truth, the true word of God, you know, by the spirit and not by the flesh. You know, it's a difference when you serve the Lord in flesh and works and serve the Lord by the spirit. And we are trying to get into a little bit of that today. All right, but the first scripture we're going to go with today is going to be... Um, John 117. So let's get there. Let's get this thing going because um, like I said before in all my other videos, I want to keep these videos too long because they take a long time to try to download. Okay, so John 117. Now we know that a lot of the stuff the Hebrew Israelites talk about out in the streets, some of it is true. I mean they read it, what they read it, they read it straight from your Bible. If you ever look at them, they read straight from the scriptures. They read right from the book, but they just not given the fullness of the words or the scripture that they given to you. So they might just go and pick out a scripture and just read the scripture, but they may not give you the detail of why the Lord put that scripture there. But we're going to take care of a lot of that today. But anyway, we're going with John 1.17. We're going to start there. And John 1.17, let me make sure I got my place right too here. 
Okay, and uh, of course you know by now, if you listen to my videos, you'll know that I use the King James Bible also. And that's the only book we use. And if you have any other type of book, I would advise you to get you a King James Version. Before they be stricken, where you cannot get one. So get one if you don't want to read it, get it. Put it in your closet, hide it in the woods, do whatever you want to do with it, but get yourself one. <clears throat> okay, John 1.17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So, yes, we know that uh, a lot of people here in the United States now are of the tribes of Israel. And that's why you have a lot of people saying that they are Hebrew Israelites. But the reason they say they're Hebrew Israelites is because of the fact they cannot tell you exactly which tribe they from? Because we know when the people came over here, uh, when the Lord scattered the people, you know, he scattered all of Israel, not just one tribe. So they probably can't tell you exactly which tribe they from. They go back to the scripture, look at Deuteronomy, and said that we came over here with yokes on our necks. Yeah, maybe. But which tribe are you? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people can't exactly tell you exactly which tribe they from. But they know they are of the Hebrew Israelites. But that's fine. But anyway, we're looking at right now whether we should be under the law or whether we should be in the period of grace and mercy. Which I think they're having a hard time trying to figure out and understand. And um, that's why the video for today is that um, Hebrew Israelites blinded to the word of God. Because, um, like the Lord said, he had blinded them until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So that's why I always tell the people that I come in contact with, um, it's just like when you listen to a person ministry, it's just like eating chicken. Do you eat all of the chicken? No, you do not eat all of the chicken. You eat the meat and you leave the bone. So you take what you take from them, you eat the meat of it, and you leave the bone. You don't eat the bone because all of that, what I'm saying to you, you might can't eat all that because all of that, what they're saying might not be true. Okay, so, um, you know, and then a lot of times you always hear them out there saying, well, God hate Esau. He Lord Jacob, but he hate Esau. You know, they go right to that one scripture. But like I tell people, the scriptures don't prescribe to me that God hated Esau. What he was saying was similar, like I might say, um, well, um, I hate black folks. And then you might say, well, um, Mr. John, how do you say you hate black folks? I'm, well, what I'm saying, did I say I hate black folks? Or am I saying I hate what they do? You see what I'm saying? And that's how the Lord could be saying what he's saying, what he say, I hate Esau. I love Jacob, I hate Esau. So what is he saying? Is he saying he hate Esau? Or is he saying... That he hate what he do. Which one? You see what I'm saying? So now, let's go over here to um, Romans 9.13. And let me see can I keep up with y'all. Give y'all time to get these scriptures. Because I want to make sure you follow me along, you know, which way I go here. <clears throat> and um, we like reading the scripture, you know, not just talking, but actually give you scripture you can follow along in your Bible. And, um. Look at what we give it to you so we don't just be talking and you not following along. All right, so Romans 9, 13, let's get that real quick. Because they always say, um, um, God hate Esau. He loved Jacob. But anyway, let's go with Romans 9, 13. Let's see what that said. It said, and it is written, Jacob, have I loved, have I loved. But Esau have I hated. And that's the scripture. Like I say, what they would do is just bring out that one scripture. They don't read before and after. All they want to do is point out to you that Romans 9.13, it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Okay? But let's go back to 11. What did 11 say? For the children being not yet born. So what have Esau done? You see what I'm saying? Neither having done any good or evil. 
He ain't did no evil. He ain't did good or evil. He ain't born yet. That the purpose of God according to election might stand. Not of works. And that's why I keep telling these Hebrew Israelites, you got to come out of the law now. We out of the law. We in grace and mercy now. But anyway, the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, which is God. It was said to her, unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. So it was just prophesied that the Lord know what you're going to do. He even know if you 40 years old today, he know what you're going to do tomorrow. He know who your husband going to be. He know who your wife going to be. He know who your children going to be. He already know all of this stuff. Is that, is that taking away your free will? No, it's not. He just know what you're going to do. You see what I'm saying? Okay, but anyway, um, <clears throat> let's go back here. You know, cause like I said, most of my Hebrew Israelites, they like dealing with uh, Old Testament. And like I tell people today, when you hear a person say, I'm a Hebrew Israelite, you can almost bet your bottom dollar that they do not understand Scripture. Just for a person to say to me, uh, I'm a Hebrew Israelite, the first thing that'll come to my mind, you don't, know, you don't understand Scripture then. Because you should be saying that you're a Christian, following after the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, even though you are a heathen, a Gentile, or a Hebrew Israelite. In your mind should be what? You're in the church now. You're part of the body of Christ. Like he took the disciples, the 12 disciples, who was what? Of Israel, of the house of Israel. He had to pick one from each tribe so they could stand at the gates in the end. Each one of them disciples going to be standing at each one of them gates from each tribe. They the house of Israel. But they are where? They are in the church. Let's go there. Well, anyway, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 1. <clears throat> okay, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 1. The Lord said, Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And we know what he's talking about back when they came out of Egypt. As the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Sinai, Sinai Seir many days, and the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed, compassed this mountain long enough Turn you northward. So what was going on here? Making them go around in the wilderness. He had them going around the wilderness for their disobedient Hebrew Israelites. Disobedience continued to the word of God. They've been rejecting the word of God from the day that Moses delivered them out of Egypt. Matter of fact, there was rebellion being delivered. Being delivered, there was rebellious. Not delivered, being delivered. Verse 3, Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 2, verse 3. You have compassed this mountain long enough, turn ye northward. And command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brother, the children of Esau, which dwell in Sierra, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore, meddle not with them. That's verse 5. Now, if the Lord hated Esau, verse 5, meddle not with them. Now, you mean to tell me that the Lord allowed Moses, Joshua, and all of them to kill off every person, people, that they... Everywhere they passed through, they would kill off the people. The babies, children, dogs, cats, anything they had, the Lord ordered them to kill it all dead. Don't leave nothing alive. If he hated Esau, why would he allow them to take their land if they hated Esau? Like you say, God hate Esau, but he loved Jacob. You see what I'm saying? So he's not saying he hated Esau. What he said was he didn't like what he was doing. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 5, meddle not with them for I will give you, for, for I will not give you of their land, no, not 
so much as a foot breath. That means the size of your shoe, you won't even gain that much space on their land. That means like if you coming on my land, let's say I got three acres or six acres, right? The Lord said, if you step foot on that land with your eight inch shoe or 12 inch shoe, you won't even gain a foot breath. So what he's saying to you, he might even send an angel of God out to kill you, even though you're trying to come against Esau. Because you said, God hate Esau. If God hate Esau, go up there and meddle with them then. If you think he hate Esau, see what happened to you. And then the Lord said also, verse 4 again, I command out the people saying, ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren. Now, you say Esau was of the white man. If Esau is of the white man, then is the white man your brother? See, y'all can listen to what y'all be saying when y'all be teaching these scriptures. You say Esau or the white man, so is the white man your brother? Or you want to change it when, when something else is said about something that he is your brother. Oh, no, well, now he ain't my brother. No, I didn't know that the Lord said that he was our brother. Yeah, then what? He's not a white man then. He's a black man. He's not white. <clears throat> and that's why the Lord said not to meddle with them because he have, verse 5, I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breath, because East. I have given Mount Seir, Seir unto Esau for a possession. So the Lord have given Esau land as a possession. So ain't no way he could have hated him. That's not like me saying, well, uh, I love one of my sons. I hate the other one. But yet still I'm going to go get him land for a possession. And I'm going to tell my other son, don't go that mellow with him either. You see what I'm saying? Or you're going to have to deal with me. If you go mellow with him, you got to deal with me. So do that mean that I hate him? No, it do not. It just means that what the Lord was saying, he might have just not liked the something that he did. It's not said that he hate Esau. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to continue on because we want to get this video done, you know, in about 30 minutes if possible. It don't look like it, though. We got a lot to cover. All right, so now we're going to go over to Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Let's get that real quickly. Give y'all a few minutes. I'm going to turn slowly. <laughs> yeah. Because I know a lot of people have to find their books, you know, because I remember when I first started reading the Bible, I had to go back to the concordance in the front, you know, to the index, you know, try to figure out where all the books was, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know what Genesis was. It was the first book. I'm looking in the, I'm looking in the index. <laughs> I'm trying, they said, go to Genesis. I'm in the index trying to find Genesis. And it's the first book. <laughs> I said, now that just to show you when a person is not in the Word of God, that is ridiculous. The first book, and you got to go to the index to find out that the book they talk about is the first book. But anyway, we there now. Uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 12. All right, let's look at that real quick. <clears throat> Romans chapter 7. I'm going to get there quickly. Y'all probably beat me there, but anyway. All right, Romans chapter 7, verse 12. I'm going to try to go through these a little faster. Wherefore, the law is holy. And to command is holy and just and good. And that's what I'm saying. I'm putting these scriptures specifically because you always had it, the uh, Hebrew Israelites. If you say, well, we're not under the law. You know, we in the church, we're not under the law. But they'll go and pull one scripture and say, okay, read this, Mr. Minister, there. Wherefore the law is holy. So they say, oh, the law, hold it. So no, we don't, we, we do the law because it would give it to us as the, the house of Israel. So we do the law, the law, hold it. And the commandments hold it also. So we do the law and the commandment. And I'm like, that's fine. And just and good. And yes, it was holy. And the commandments are holy. And it is just and good. Why was that? That because in the Old Testament, you didn't have anything. You were a sinner. You was a sinner till the Lord gave Moses the commandments. Once he gave him the commandments, <clears throat> then you knew that um, you didn't have anything. So that made the law 
holy to you. Because without the law, you was just committing sins. So you needed the law. That's why the law was holy to you, because it took you out of your sin nature. Okay, so that's why we put that in here. So you, we can, you know, add a little information about that one also. But anyway, my next one is, I got seven and one. Let me see what Romans seven and one say. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, that B came in here, but he seen me get up and got that hot shot, so he just had to go. Okay, but anyway, let's keep rolling. Um, Romans 7 and 1. Okay, let's look at that, Romans 7 and 1. Know ye not, know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. How that the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman that has an husband is bound by the law to her husband. So, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Okay, so we're going to skip down to verse... Um, Let me keep going to verse 4. It says, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. So what he is saying is, just like if a woman, he was, he was given the, the, the parable of if a man married to a woman, and if he die, then we already know that what? She is free. She is free from her husband because her husband is dead. So that's what the Lord is saying here now. Wherefore, by, wherefore, this is Romans 7 and 4. Wherefore, my brother, ye also are become dead to the law. So we dead to the law. Yeah, the body of Christ now. Not the Hebrew Israelites. Not the Mormons. Not Confucius. Not Buddhism. Wherefore, my brother, ye also are become dead to the law. By the body of Christ. So if you're not in the body of Christ, of course you're going to say we do the law. Because you don't understand the cross. You know, because the Lord came and died, uh, shed his blood to cover your sins. Just like the Lord had to do in the beginning of time with Adam and Eve. When he had to uh, cover their sins with the lamb blood. Another representation of Jesus Christ all the way from the beginning of time in your scriptures. That ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So how are you going to bring fruits unto God now in this dispensation of grace? By following the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not being under the law. You cannot be saved by your works of the old covenant. You can only be saved by the new covenant now. Okay, so now let's look at... Um, Exodus chapter 20 Because you know a lot of times the Hebrew Israelites said well y'all folks are in the church y'all defile y'all don't keep the law Y'all don't do the commandments y'all shaking your tail on the BT videos rabble rapping cursing folks guns and Doing all this stuff y'all not keeping the law y'all not keeping the uh The Sabbath day is their main concern That we as the church we don't keep the uh The Sabbath day <clears throat> so over in Exodus chapter 20, this is your list of the commandments. And in the commandments, it says... Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. 
nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his oxen, or his ass, that's mean donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor. And all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise of the trumps and the mountain smoke. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let us not speak, and let, but let not God speak with us. So what they saying? The same thing today. Mr. John, you speak to us. Tell us because we can talk back to you. But don't let God speak to us. <laughs> but let not God speak with us. At least we die. <laughs> because you know, if the Lord speak with you from your ways that you're doing, you're trying to confront me with the law. And I'm trying to tell you we're in grace and mercy. But you're trying to have a conf conf confrontation with me but you're saying but let not God speak with us because we know God speak with us then we know we're in trouble I mean they trying to I, I, I get a Hebrew Israelites credit though because they are trying to you know get the word of God out but like I said because they're in their state of slumber of um, blindness you know they're not able to do it to the fullness that's why most of the time when you see them out in the street, they always have confrontations with, you know, out of people about the scripture because, see, the Gentiles now know the truth. How did they get the truth? They got the truth from the teachings of Paul from our New Testament reading, from our New Testament's teaching, not the Old Testament. And that's why you'll see most of the time the Hebrew Israelites teaching the old law. You'll never hear them go into too much about the grace and mercy period because they know that's where the church at now. So the church... Right now is above the house of Israel, but Israel will be redeemed in the end. But anyway, Exodus chapter 20 just give you a little uh, uh, insight on your uh, on your commandments. Actually, you can go ahead and just start with uh, chapter one and just read them all down through that, because they say that you know the church we don't uh, we don't keep the Sabbath, but we'll deal with that in a few minutes. <clears throat> Okay, now, um, let's go over to Hebrews 4 and 9. Hebrews 4 and 9, real quickly. I hope y'all are able to keep up with me here a little bit. I ain't going too fast. Hebrews 4 and 9. And my thing today is to arm the people with the word of God, you know, so you'll know how to, you know, ask questions when you go out before people, you know, on the street, you know, they telling you that God coming to kill you and he's going to destroy you and do all this stuff to you. You need to know the word of God. And that's why I'm saying if you're not in your scriptures, you don't know the word of God. You have no defense because your defense today is the word of God, not some gun or knife or throwing beer bottles and stuff like that. That's not a defense. All right, but anyway, Hebrews 4 and 9 says, let's look at that real quick. <clears throat> 4 and 9 says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own work, as God did from his. So what the Lord is saying to the church, enter into Christ, you know, spiritually. Enter into Christ, enter into the confession with your mouth, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You know, enter into Christ, and then you should cease from your own works as God rested from his. And that's what I try to explain to these Hebrew Israelites. This is our rest day. You see what I'm saying? So this will cover us in Exodus 20. See, we didn't leave out the Sabbath. We just don't do the Sabbath as you do the Sabbath. And verse 11 says, this Hebrew 4, 11, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So if you have unbelief about the cross, about what Christ did on the cross, then you are an unbeliever. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the Divine asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow 
and is discerned, discerning of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So what we're saying here again today, you have to be a believer of Jesus Christ in order to fulfill your um, commandment, your Ten Commandments, because you still have to keep the Sabbath. What is the Sabbath? What does it say? Sabbath what? It's a day of rest. That's what that is. It's a rest to the people of God. If you're not of the people of God, then of course you might need to want to try to do the law. But anyway, let's keep going right on down here. We're at now uh, Luke 2356. Okay, let's look at that real quick. I'm coming up on 30 minutes. I might let this go a little longer, try to get this finished. Yeah, I ain't got much more to go. All right, Luke 23:56. This thing may hold us 30 to 40 minutes, though. Luke 23:56. I hope I took my notes down correctly here. 2356. Let's see what they say real quickly. And they return and prepare spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Now, this is what Christ did. Let's go back up to 55. And the woman also which come with them from Galilee follow after and beheld the sepulcher, and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandments. Why did they do this? Because the grace and mercy period has not came yet. That's why they were still doing all this stuff. They were still what Christ did when he came. It was difficult why he kept saying to the disciples, he kept saying to them, have you not understood? You know, I've been with you all this time. Have you not understood what I'm saying to you? Because it was difficult for them for 4,000 years to be living according to the law. For Christ to come and tell them that you're not living up to the law no more. You know, we give it a change over into the grace and mercy. We give it a change from the law because you cannot keep the law. So the Lord has sent me because he put a deaf one on all mankind. So what minister? A deaf one. On all mankind, there was a deaf one issued. So what the Lord said, well, before I kill all of them, let me send my son that whosoever believe on him shall be saved. And that's why you have the church now, all the people now that believe on Christ they're going to be saved, and they're going to be raptured up, what? In the church. Now, a lot of people don't like to hear that word. They say, well, the rapture is not in the Bible. Well, what we're saying is they're going to be lifted up, or they're going to be gathered together with Christ. If you don't want to use that word, that's fine, but it's just a way of explaining what's going to take place. Okay, now I put that in there, so we'll put something in there to show you that at a certain point in time, they were keeping the Sabbath day. But not now according to the church. Not if you enter into the rest of Christ. You're not keeping the Sabbath. Not in this manner, anyway. Okay. Yeah, because like I said, that he Christ had not fulfilled. Um, everything hadn't taken place yet is the reason they still doing the Sabbath. Okay, so let's look at Hebrews 4 and 10 real quick. Let's go back to Hebrews 4 and 10 real quick. I got something else there. Hebrews 4 and 10. Let me see what my notes say. We're going to look at 9 and 10 real quick. Hebrews 4, 9 and 10. Oh, we did that. Did we get that? Yeah, we showed that we did that 9 and 10. 4, 9 and 10. Okay, so that was good then. Okay, let's look at 3. Let me make sure I got this right, what I want. Yeah. Hebrews 3 and 6. We're going to look at Hebrews 3 and 6 real quick. But Christ as a son over his own house. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence 
Like I said, don't let somebody shake your anointing or come in trying to convince you that you need to be under the law. Don't allow it to happen. But Christ as a son over his own house because Christ is over you. Don't worry about what nobody telling you about what's going to happen to you. Don't worry about all that. Christ is over you. If you're in the body of Christ, then he is your protector. Who house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. You have to keep this till you die. You have to go to the grave. Just like all the rest of the prophets did. Abraham, you know, Isaac, Jacob, they all died in faith waiting on the promise of God. And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to go to your grave believing what I'm saying to you. Not what the Hebrew Israelites saying to you. You believe what I'm saying to you. Not what they saying. As long as you follow what I'm saying to you, you will be saved. Okay, my next one is. Okay, let's go to Galatians real quick. Because I think maybe one or two more here. I think I'm going to be ending this real quickly here. Galatians 3 and 8. And I think I went over this with one of the ladies in the Hebrew Israelites. But, you know, they still rejecting the call of God because of their blindness. You know, all of the, the filth that they have inherited from our ancestors. All of the filthiness, all of the rebelliousness, all of the, you know, just rejected the word of God, you know, just continuously. So I can expect them to do it today. But anyway, Galatians chapter 3 verse 6. Let's look at that real quick. Even as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him. For righteousness. And if you believe what I'm saying today. And if you believe. Um, what I'm saying. Then the Lord will count it to you also for righteousness. Verse 7. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith. See we're not under the law no more. We are now working of faith. The same are the children of Abraham. So if you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. By faith. Then you are just like the Hebrew Israelites that were actually the original tribes of the uh, that came through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You now, as a Gentile, a Buddhism, a atheist, a Jehovah Witness, or Pentecostal, anybody, if you believe now on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Even as Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. So you can come in unto the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, confessing of your sins, you know, on the Lord, and it will be counted to you for righteousness. Verse 7, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scriptures foreseeing in the future that God would justify the heathen. So those people that the Hebrew Israelites keep talking about, oh, the Lord going to burn y'all with fire. He's going to destroy y'all. Y'all going to be at our footstool. And, you know, just like y'all had us and, and changed it, we're going to put y'all back in the know. We ain't, ain't going to do that because the Lord, when he sent his ministers up to judge, what, how would they judge according to Scripture? They judge according to righteousness. They don't do that foolishness about you mad with somebody. You mad with some man because he hung you. Or your ancestor from a tree. No, you're not going to be a partaker of the offices of God. Because you have to judge what? You have to do righteous judgment. You know, judgments. Know you therefore, verse 7. Know you therefore that they which are of faith are the same are uh, the children of Abraham. The scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, which was the Gentiles, through faith preaching before the gospel. Unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. All nations. Not what the Hebrew Israelites try to say. Not that the Hebrew Israelites will scatter through all nations. No, that's not what he's talking about. He said, The heathen. Not the Israelites here. We're not talking about the Israelites here. We're talking about the heathen that shall be saved as children of Abraham that believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 9, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. 
So you're just as good and as well as Abraham was if you believe by faith. Verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is everyone that continue not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Let me read that for you again. For you Hebrew Israelites that keep going out preaching with your false teaching. You preaching your false teaching doctrine. You the house of God. You the children of Israel. And you still rebellious. You still will not listen to the ministers in the church. Because you're trying to say the church is defiled. Because it came through Constantine. Let me read this for you again. For as many as are of the works of the law. Are under the curse of the law. You hear me what I'm saying. For it is written. Curse is everyone that continue not in all things. You have to do everything that was ever written in the law. Which are written in the books of the law to do them. You have to do all of those things. You don't want to do that because you cannot fulfill it. And you do not want to stand before the, for the Lord of glory. The mighty God. Trying to tell him that you trying to fulfill the law. Because you saying what he did on the cross won't satisfy for you. <laughs> you said that won't good enough for you. You need to do your own works again, like you was doing in the Old Testament. You tell the Lord God, "No, nah, I don't need you. I can do this myself. You cannot do it, and it will get you killed." Verse eleven. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. So don't let nobody try to tell you you need to do the law. But no man. Verse eleven. But. That no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. This is your armor today. You just received the armor of God. How to defend yourself against this false teaching. It is evident for the just shall live by faith, not by works. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them. Shall live by them. So if you want to do it, that's how you live. But if you live by faith, that's how you live. So if a man want to live by the law, I'd be like, sir, go ahead and live by the law. There's no need to try to convince me to live by the law because I'm not going to follow you, Hebrew Israelites. You've been corrupted ever since the day that the Lord set you free. And you're still corrupted today. And you still will not listen to the men and women of God that they had the word that come to you. But you still are rebellious continuously. Okay, now I got one more here. Uh, because the Lord said, John, at the end of this uh, message, you still have to let the children of Israel know that they will be redeemed. And they will be. But right now, they are blinded to the word of God. They read the book. They read the Bible, but they have no understanding of what they're reading. If they would take time... <clears throat> And ask the Lord, give ye the Holy Ghost. Pray to God, say, no God in my heart. Yeah, I word there. I, I am a Hebrew Israelite. But from the preaching and the teaching from the church, from the men and women of God, I'm understanding that there's a new covenant now for the people of God. That we are not under that old covenant. We are under the new covenant. And that new covenant is um, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that you believe on here, not of, of the works of the law. Okay, let's go to Romans 11, 11, um, 25. Romans 11, 25, and I got one more left here, and I should get this done. Look, it's going to be an hour now, but anyway, it's going to be good for a lot of people because a lot of people like these videos and some might not be, might be too long for you, but that's fine. If you're in the word of God, it would not be long enough. Trust me. Romans 11, 25. Okay. For I would not, brother, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. That ye should be wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part has happened to Israel. 
until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. So what the Lord is saying, um, Israel will be redeemed. The people you see on the street, the Hebrew Israelites, all of them, they will be redeemed. But when? The blindness, verse 25, 11, 25. That's why they not they pull one scripture for you. They cannot read the whole chapter. Because if they read the whole chapter, it's going to confuse them what they're saying. That blindness in part has happened to Israel. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Now, don't let them fool you saying that. Uh, oh, no, well, he ain't talking about you Gentiles. He talking about the Hebrews, Israelites, that was falling out the out of gods. They became Gentiles. Don't let them trick you with that foolishness. He talking about the actual Gentiles that was not of the house of Israel. And that could be white people, Russians, Chinese, anybody that wasn't in the house of Israel. They was called a Gentile. Yeah, some Israelites were called Gentiles too because of their paganism. But he's not talking about them. He's talking about you. And you can be saved today by accepting the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, now, my last one. I'm coming to the end right now, right here. I'm at 46 minutes, which is not long. It didn't even take an hour. I so said I'm going to stop at 30, but my, my phone, everything looks like everything is working good. So uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here on Ezekiel 36. <clears throat> But we want to go to Ezekiel 36 real quick. I'm going to look at 22. And then we're going to bring this to a close. Ezekiel 36 <clears throat> and 22. Glory be to the Almighty God. Give ye thankful, be ye thankful. Because you know what's not coming the next day. But the Lord will protect those that believe. On him. Uh, Ezekiel uh, 36 and 22. 36 and 22. Okay, where I'm at here. Okay, I'm going to find it in a minute. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel. Which I'm speaking to you today. So I'm telling you that listen to me today. Listen to me what I'm telling you. Not what they say. You listen to what I'm saying today. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I do not this for your sake. So what the Lord is saying, yeah, I'm going to redeem Israel in the end. After the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Therefore, 22, therefore say to the house of Israel, I'm telling you what the Lord said, I'm saying to you right now. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes. Don't think that you so high mighty because you the 12 tribes of the house of Israel. The Lord said, thus says the Lord God, I do not this for your sake. O house of Israel, but he doing this for what? For my holy name. Sake, which ye have polluted, profaned among the heathen, whether ye went. So the Lord has said, He's not coming to redeem you for your sakes. <laughs> he ain't coming to redeem you <laughs> for his sake. He coming because he spoke unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the word of God is true and it's gonna stay true. He made a promise to them that he was going to keep the house of Israel. So that's why he had to come back for you because he said, it's not for your sake, but for his name. It's for his holy name, you know, that his word be true. That's why he coming back to say, you so don't think you out here doing something so fresh. You know, like I said, shaking your tails on the BET, you know, and cursing with your rap songs and, you know, shooting and doing all the stuff we doing. We out of, out of control. So don't think it's you that the Lord's coming back for because you're so holy now. Because